I've been wanting to do a video about this for a while now, and a discussion on the Violin Guild came up, and it seemed like now was as good a time as any. And first I want to say that I'm indebted to Kimber Ludiker of the band Della May for giving me the seed of this idea. Um, the secret is in the A major scale. Uh, well, seriously, it's uh, just in learning how to play the A major scale. So you start off with that. So one of the things that you'll notice is that your hand position when you play an A major scale has your whole step, your whole step, and your half step. And then on the next string, it's again a whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. As we know from a major scale, whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half is the uh, order of the, the notes. The uh, interesting thing about this is that it doesn't matter where you start your first finger, you end up playing a major scale as long as your hand is in this position. So, if I'm at a jam and someone says, you know, I'm tired of playing that song in A, I'd like to play it in B instead. Many violinists will tell you that B is a terrible key to play in, but if you just play it in second position, you can play an A major scale, but on B. So it's a B major scale. And immediately, all of your uh, worries about improvisation start to melt away. And one important thing I will note about this is when you're learning the A major scale, it's important that you learn it with the fourth finger, uh, because if you learn it with the open strings, obviously this kind of falls apart. Uh, also, I wanted to mention that your first two strings always have this position. Once you get above that, the half step moves position. So you had A major, A, B, C sharp, D, etc. And then once you get to the A string, the half step moves. And the half step always moves down by one finger. So it just moves to there. So now we have open A or A from the string before, B, C sharp, D, etc. So anytime you move up the strings, the half step moves. Once you've played two, set, two strings, the half step moves down a place. So if you're playing in a key on the G string where this is your shape of your hand, once you get to the A string, the shape of your hand is going to be that. All right, now on to the next practical application of this. Uh, essentially what you're doing is you're making your first finger a capo. You're playing A major scale, and your first finger can really stay exactly where you put it. Just kind of stays right, right where you put it. So what this also means is that now you can also play some of the chords or the comping that is uh, more prevalent in some of the bluegrass, the folk music, that kind of thing. Uh, if you know a little bit about chord inversions and the fact that you can play two notes on the violin, you can play the one, the four, and the five chord very easily on the violin using this technique. So let's talk about uh, the key of A. You have the one chord, which is A. You'd have A, C sharp, and E. And for the sake of uh, clarity here, we're just going to play the A chord as a perfect fifth. So we're going to play the A, we're going to play the E, like that. Now you have the four chord, which is D. Uh, you can play it this way. You can go down to the A that's down here. And since we know that the A is in the chord, and it's actually the five, the fifth note in the D major scale, we can get away with playing that note, no problem. The third in D major is F sharp. So we have D, F sharp. So what we can actually do is keep that finger on the A and play the F sharp. And now we're playing an inversion of the D chord or an inversion of the IV chord. And now we have the V chord. The V chord, of course, is E. And again, we know that we have the fifth on the string below. So now we can play the E chord by putting a finger on E and a finger on B. Now the reason this is really useful for any folk musician is that now you know the three most common chords in any piece. The one, the four, and the five chord. Here's your A. Here's your D. Here's your E. And now you can comp on that however you want to. etc. 
So now that you know how to play the 1, the 4, and the 5 in the key of A, and you know the rule about playing A in any key, it follows then that if you just move your first finger anywhere else, you can end up playing the 1, the 4, and the 5 in whatever other key. Let's go back to our friend who wanted to play in the key of B major. Just play in B. Now you can either play with the second finger or you can shift, play in second position. So here's your one, here's your four, here's your five, and back to your one again.